Welcome back, everyone, to our last session before the closing remarks. We've got Edouard here, and we are going to be listening to his talk on the basics of video and audio editing. Um, he's a Fedora enthusiast, you know, using Linux since 2005, so I'm sure he has a lot to share, um, and I'm excited to hear all about it. So I'll let you take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline. Uh, well, uh... What you're going to see right now is just a very basic thing on how to do some of the most of the two or three most common things that you do with video and audio in a computer. It's not uh, intended to technical people, but a lot of people do this in 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 their life because it's just fun. And the first things I'm going to do is to show you how to very quickly do a video with photos of pictures and this is um like i do a make sure a short video with your pictures with your memories to do to share in a social media or with your family via any way you want to do so the first things i'm going to do is share my screen this very cute awesome software is called OpenShot. It's a video editor. It's very similar. The layout is very similar to KD, KD in life that we saw yesterday, I think, or in the first day. I'm not sure. I think it was the first day we did, uh, uh, we have a presentation on KD in life. The difference in the layout is that we don't have two preview panes. We, we just have this one. But the project files is there, is, are here and the tracks. The thing, the difference also is that the tracks are both media. It could be audio and video and pictures. It's not separated. Uh, there is no separated tracks for audio and video. So what a track is, is just a layer. It's a layer of the composition you're going to do. So if you want to put um, a, several stuff, for example, an audio will be a layer over or under the video. It, it doesn't matter because audio and video are not uh, shown. But if you put one video overall uh, uh, on top of the other in the, in the layers, they are going to overpose. So uh, the thing here is you, you need to be a little uh, a bit creative on how you manage. And the thing is that this all these softwares, including Kdn Life, including Aura CD, including OpenShot, uh, they help you to fix things one next to the other to don't, to don't overlay. So the first thing that I'm going to do in a video, it will be to uh, to do um, a slideshow with your pictures. So the first thing is importing the files. Is just click in the project files, or you can do just import files. It's not open file or open project. Uh, open project is to save the, the whole the window with all the tracks or everything that is related to your video project. The things you are going to add, I think in KDN Live we're called resource, like here, they are here, here are just files. So import files and then you go to your location. I just choose a lot of uh, of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful badges. So I think the, the, the manual way to do it should just to drag and drop your image here and then drag the other. And you see, when you get close to the other, it align it by itself. And then you can put the other one. And there you can go one by one. And when you can you do the preview, and this is way too slow, it just change the image but that's not exactly beautiful or or compelling and the other thing is this this software are now uh, function very similar to how a uh, file manager functions or a text editor functions you can just click sensing and click and do control x to cut or and control c and control v and you can paste it and move it just with drag and drop so now it's very very easy to use this type of software so if i want to select everything i just click i did a square and everything inside the square is selected and now i can delete so if you select all your 
um, your resources and you drag them here, ah, it doesn't happen anything. Yes, it doesn't happen anything. But if you do here in uh, in any of the file here, you do right click and then you click add to timeline. Then you have a way to put all the images, sort the images, and even put a transition and effect between the images. And you can put how much time you want to each image to be shown on their on your screen. So you can select the track. I normally use the track five, that is the um, the upper one in the default. You can add or delete uh, tracks. Uh, then I use start time at zero. The first one is, is in, in the zero second. Fade in and fade out is just like, uh, it's an effect. But if you are going to add a transition, I don't recommend to use fading. But that's totally up to you. You can do, I have a lot of effects like fade. Like I say, fade is just the image go um, lighter and until it's complete and then it's up the opacity goes down 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 until it disappears and uh, wipe out is just from bottom to top or white left to right or right to left or top to bottom for the squares is that that effect that you have a lot of squares with the image and then move from the left from the right bar ripple there is a lot of effect i just want to do this random and the transition i want to length one second and the duration of each image to be I going to want to do three seconds. So finally, you have a key. Uh, you finally hear an estimation of of the duration of the video you're going. You are doing. You click OK, and the magic is done. Every you can see this because they are very small. But what you can do is you click. You you hit the key Enter and the uh, Control. Sorry, and where your mouse will. You can just go up and you will see a bigger representation. Each of one is a representation of an image. This, this blue square is the representation of the effect or the transition effect. So uh, there is even a transition effect from the uh, image incoming. So you can see the preview. And there is an effect, three seconds, the other one, and the other one. And you have a very quick video with a lot of pictures. In this case, I just grab a ton of the badges I, I have and put it there. Uh, also, you, if you want to put uh, some music, some audio, some audio file, it's not hard. You just import a new file. And the file you're going to import should be an audio file. You can do WAV, MP3, or anything. And then I recommend to put the audio tracks in another in another track. And see, you're not going to hear it, but when you can pull, you hit play again. You need to put the pointer of the video zero. It's this one. I think you can do this. Yes, I always forgot that, but. Here you can go to the beginning or to the end. There you go. Then you can click play. Right now, I, I'm very sure that you cannot hear it. But let me see if I can do this. And of course, Every audio file has a duration in the term in, in, in terms of what is uh, uh, working with a video or audio file is different uh, because you cannot cut an audio; it's going to just mute by, uh, uh, abruptly. But um, you can prepare your audio track in Audacity. That is the next thing I'm going to do. And other thing that normally people do a lot. I, I'm, I'm impressed about how much people do this, is um, to put a, what is called, I think, a watermark. Uh, correct me in the in the chat if this is not the, the right uh, 
um, term, the right word, but I think it's a watermark. If you want to put a video with a watermark, so I just want to clean the project. So what I do is control with the wheel of the mouse, I just go down, 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 down to put this small, and then you can just select everything and delete, and there your project is gone. So for a watermark, what it, what you want to do is to put uh, to do um, uh, to overexpose to to expose one image in over the video. Now I want a watermark. So how can I do it? Well, in this case. Just move your, your project to your files to the other track. If I want to put this at zero. And then I want to use the Fedora logo here. But that thing is going to, to be all over the, the image. So you're not going to be able to see the thing you want to show. So you can just use your tool to this um, resizing tool and the location and then to be a, to watermark it you want just to you can click here ah it wasn't transform it was a property in the property you can just see the alpha channel and the alpha channel is the uh, what i call opacity is called opacity in other softwares so the alpha channel is in, in the value of one is uh, total opacity or 100% opacity. You can see the complete image, but it get is going fading when you decrease the value, and the minimum value is zero. That is totally transparent. So a watermark, I recommend always like 30, 40. It depends on the background or your video. So in this case, and I want to put the watermark to be the complete side of the project because I want to be over the whole video. So when you click play, you're going to see the Fedora logo over there. Uh, if you see this, the, um, these tools to resize and move the, the image, just click uh, and select them. When you select the image, it's going to show you the controls. And when you unselect it do that so normally at the end of the project what you want to do is to create a video not a project so what most people uh, confuse in this type of softwares is that what happened when you save is you save that is normally this icon kd people know this icon very well uh, for other type of of desktops or other software is like a disket or I don't know the save button you have or you can just save project it save the project is a file that contain a description of what you add where you add it how much time is usually it's a text file or a, uh, in xml format or whatever that allow the software to know what you add where and and in what position in what time so you can save here you can say if Freedom, zoom it, and it's safe. But when you are going to check, there is no video here. What you create if submit freedom submit here is an ODP file, an open project file. So if you if I close here this here, and I open the file. It's just going to load again open shot with the location, the resources, and everything in the position that I use in first place. So this is an open shot project. It's not a video. It's not what you want to share. And the thing. And even it doesn't save this. Oh, that's weird. So what you want to do to have a video is to export, or in this case, is export video. 
OpenShot makes things very easy for you. When you click export, you are going to see a lot of profiles or or formats. So what you want to do, for example, in case of device, you have an Apple TV, a phone, or an Xbox. I usually pre pre uh, prefer to use MP3.4. The video profile, if this is a little bit technical, a lot of people get scared with this. But it's just how the video is going to be uh, created. Uh, in, uh, in case you're going to use a phone, uh, there is HD vertical or if just mobile here. Uh, I usually just get MP4 and in the quality I put high. It, quality means uh, uh, impact directly in the size of your file, but uh, more quality is via better good looking video. So export video. Oh, I forgot to change the name, but that's okay. So using this kind of uh, software is not hard. I think it's, uh, it gets, it's scary because you don't understand the interface. It's a lot of controls, a lot of pains, a lot of tools or, or things that you are unfamiliar, some things that you are familiar, but do different stuff of what you think it will do. But it's not hard. I mean, it's just take a little bit of patience and a little bit of take advantage of what the tool could do. And in this case, I create a video. You can see the little VLC icon here. And here is our video with our watermark. So that's two of the most common things I always ask for people to do and is to create a, a slideshow with pictures and to create a good, a beautiful memory with their pictures. And the other thing is to put a watermark in a video to for a brand or just to mark your, the video with your something that is uh, that make the video say is my video. And in terms of what is audio productions, uh, I pre-open one of the episodes of the Fedora podcast. And here is practically the same. You have to see different tracks. The tracks are repeated because it's a stereo. So one is the left audio, the other one is the right audio. And each uh, track have their own controls to paint the audio and to put more or less volume into the audio. So I want to create a new project just to show you a blank project. So what the first thing you want to do is to import audio. In this case, I, put, I have a lot of data that is for this, the project, but I wanted to use like these three files they get imported and you have three files so in terms of audio normally you want to or you can or do several things one is mix the audios and the other one is just to put the audio one next to the other like we do it in open shot so this is just grab move and it if you see this is a beautiful yellow line that told you there are next to the other one in this case you have a lot of, uh, I think this is like white noise, but it's just no audio. So I select the one, the, the part that I don't want to be there and just control X. Now it is in, it's in the, um, the clipboard. You can repaste and it create a new uh, audio part so you can just move and that thing applies even inside uh, an audio file. For example, this is my, uh, the audio that I used to create with a text to speech software. 
that is saying this is the Fedora Project podcast and blah blah blah. But in case I don't, I was I just want to delete a part. You can just put part, uh, put your cursor here. You can play it. So what you saw is a very fast because I was zoom very uh, zooming very very big, but it's it's just that moving. So what I, what I want to do is uh, if I want to just I don't want to see one uh, to pardon, uh, sorry I just want to delete one part of the audio but I don't want to have all the audio deleted you can also just select and delete and and that part is gone the other thing that you want to do is just I want to mute it so in that case you can see silence audio selection is this tool is with control L so you can see now the the spectrum of the audio is gone so there is a lot of things that you can use right yourself when you are creating an audio you can mix in this case for example if I put my so if I put my cursor here and you start playing he is playing this and this audio at the same time so there is that that's the way when how you put audio over your voice there there are um other ways to do some stuff like for example you can just um cut a part here or copy a part here and put it inside here and it's going to be music the audio and then music again it's, it's it works very similar to uh, how you edit uh a uh, text file you can just cut apart put it on the other and when you read it you read it in a linear form so that's most of the stuff i did i want to show you this is how um in this case i have uh, an interview in two different audio tracks so the um, interviewer was in one audio track i think it's this one because it started with the interviewer and then these are the answers of the interviewee so you can see there are a lot of mute so that's why i use this because in the in, when you do a video call there is a lot of audio there is noise and if the other part doesn't mute the audio so there is going to be a noise um in the background when you are listening to the other people so what i use usually was just select the part when I wasn't talking or the other part wasn't talking and just put the audio flat with the silent audio selection. So this is how an audio production file looks like. I think it, it tends to look a little scary, but it's not hard to work with. I think I'm over the time, so if there is are there are questions or or things I don't know. Yeah, there are a couple questions. Um, Madeline, did you want to jump on? Yes, and actually, I, I would love to start with my own question, um, which I hope I didn't miss um, in any of your presentation. It's just like a total inundation of. Uh, information. Um, but how long have yeah. you been working with this program? With Audacity, I have four years now because I started when I started Fedora Podcast. But at my but but my first audio project in Audacity was having zero experience, just a lot of researching and reading on how the uh, how Audacity works. And the audio files from the interview, my first interview was with Matty Miller, with our Fedora project leader. So I didn't want to do a bad job with the audio project. And with the video tool, I think I'm doing this in different tools, like I'm a college, because being when you are a system guy, an informatic or a people that just like computers, uh, your family tends to think that you can do or you know how to do everything from fixing your microwave to hack your Facebook account. So everything that is related with to a computer tends to go to me. So the first time said, you can do a video with our photos because I want to have a beautiful memory. 
when we travel and say, I have no idea how to do that, but you are, you, are. you need to be the size for this or just or the challenge. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, there's another question that says, OpenShot looks similar to Kden Live. Are there recommendations you would give about when to use which program? No. no? You use the tool that you get used to. I use OpenShot because it was the first one that get into my Google search, how to do a video in Linux. But, but what I see different yesterday, is that there are a specific track dedicated to audio and to video in KDN Live. Maybe I'm wrong, but what I detected in the tracks is the V1, V2, A1, A2, to um, naming the tracks. But I don't know if it's just naming or displaying. I'm not sure. I use KDN Live to do the um, watermark thing that I did this time because I got I had a computer that was in KDE without OpenShot installed. So I just did it, try to do it fast. And maybe the location of the tools is a little bit different, but the, the, the flow of the job is, of the work is mostly the same. I, I just recommend use the tool that is that fits your your needs. Nice, I would lean into that too. <laughs> um, and then I think our last question is, you mentioned the Fedora podcast. Are there plans to create more sessions of the podcast? Where can we listen to the published episodes? <laughs> yes, there are plans to do the third season. We decided to make each season 10 episodes long. So now there are 20 episodes uh, published and like one or two spots, but yes, there are plans to do a third uh, season this year. So hopefully soon. Brilliant. I dropped a link in the chat. Cool. Well, that concludes the last um, info session. Thank you so much, Edward. Thank you for having me.